Okay, so you mentioned ASR. Can you speak to what is ASR, automatic speech recognition? How much, like what is the gap between perfect human performance and uh, perfect or pretty damn good ASR? Yeah, so ASR, automatic speech recognition, it's a class of machine learning problem, right? To take, you know, speech like what we were talking and transform it into a sequence of words, essentially. So audio of people talking. Audio, audio to words. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's a variety of different approaches and techniques, um, which we could talk about later if you want. Uh, so, you know, we think we have pretty much the world's best ASR for this kind of um, speech, right? So there's there's different kinds of domains, right, for ASR. Like one domain might be voice assistance, right? So Siri, um, very different than what we're doing, right? Because Siri, there's fairly limited vocabulary. You know, you, know, you might ask Siri to play a song or, you know, order a pizza or whatever. Um, and it's very good at doing that. Um, very different from when we're st- talking in a very unstructured way. Mm-hmm. And Siri will also generally like adapt to your voice and stuff like this. Uh, so for, for this kind of audio, we think we have the best. And our accuracy, right now it's, I think it's maybe 14% word error rate on a, on a, our test, test suite that we generally use to measure. So word error rate is like one way to measure uh, accuracy for ASR, right? So what's 14% word error so rate? So 14% like? means across this test suite of a variety of different audios, um, it would be, um, it would get in some way 14% of the words wrong. Uh, 14% of the words wrong. Yeah. So the way you kind of calculate it is you might add up insertions, deletions, and substitutions, right? So insertions is like extra words, deletions are words that we said but um, weren't in the transcript, right? Substitutions is you said Apple, but I said, but the ASR thought it was able, something like this. Um, human accuracy, most people think realistically, it's like 3%, 2% word error rate would be like the, the max achievable. Uh, so there's still quite a gap, right? Would you say that, so YouTube, when I upload videos, often generates automatic captions. Are you sort of from a company perspective, from a tech perspective, are you trying to beat YouTube? Google, it's a hell of a, so <laughs> Google, I mean, I don't know how seriously they take this task, but I imagine it's quite serious. And they, you know, Google is probably up there in terms of their teams on um, on ASR, or just NLP, natural language processing, different technologies. So do you think you can beat Google? On this kind of stuff, yeah, we think so. Um, Google just woke <laughs> up on my phone. <laughs> this is hilarious. Okay, now Google is listening, uh, sending it back to headquarters. <laughs> Who are these rough people? <laughs> but that's the goal. No, yeah, I mean, we measure ourselves against like Google, Amazon, Microsoft. You know, some of the some smaller competitors, um, and we use like our, our internal test suite. We try to compose it of a pretty representative set of audios. So maybe it's some podcasts, some videos. Some interview, some interviews, some lectures, things like that, right? And we beat them in our own testing. And uh, actually, Rev offers automated, like you can actually just do the automated uh, captioning. So, like, I, I guess it's like way cheaper, whatever it is, whatever the rates are. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a. By the way, it used to be a dollar per minute for captioning and transcription. I think it's like a dollar fifteen or something like that. Dollar twenty five. Dollar twenty five. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dollar twenty five now, yeah, it's pre- it's pretty cool. That was the other thing that was surprising to me. It was actually like the cheapest thing you could. One of the, I mean, I, I don't remember it being cheaper. You could on Upwork get cheaper, but it was clear to me that this that's going to be really shitty. <laughs> yeah, so like you're also competing on price. I think there were services uh, that you can get like similar to Rev kind of um, feel to it, but it wasn't as automated. Like the drag and drop, the entirety of the interface. It's like the thing we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm such a huge fan of like frictionless, like uh, Amazon's single uh, buy button, whatever. Yeah, yeah. that one click. The one click, that's genius right there. Like that is so important for services. Yeah. That simplicity. And I mean, Rev is is, uh, almost there. I mean, there's like some, I'm trying to think. So I, 
I think I've uh, I stopped using uh, this pipeline, but Rev offers it, and I, I like it. But it was causing me some issues uh, on my side, which is um, you can connect it to like Dropbox, mm -hmm. and it generates the files in Dropbox. So like it it it, it closes the loop to where I don't have to go to Rev at all, and I can download it. Uh, um, sorry, I don't have to go to Rev at all and to download the files. It could just like automatically copy them. To right, you're putting your Dropbox in, you know, and a day just, later or maybe a few hours later. Yeah, it depending just on shows the up. Rush, just shows up, yeah. Yeah, I, I was trying to do it programmatically too. Is there an API interface you can? Yeah. I was trying to, through like, through Python to download stuff automatically. But then I realized this is the programmer in me. Like, Dude, you don't need to automate everything like in life like flawlessly because I wasn't doing enough captions to justify to myself the time investment into automating everything perfectly. Yeah, I would say if, uh, if you're doing so many interviews that your biggest roadblock is uh, <laughs> <laughs> clicking on the rough download button, that would, that would be, now, now you're talking about yeah. Elon Musk levels of business. <laughs> <laughs> but for sure, we have like yeah, a variety of ways to make it easy. You know, there's that. The integration you mentioned, I think, is through a company called Zapier, which kind of right. can connect um, Dropbox to Rev and uh, vice versa. We have an API if you want to really like customize it. You know, if you want to create the Lex Friedman, you know, uh, CMS or or whatever <laughs> for this whole thing. Okay, cool. So, can you speak to the the A ASR a little bit more? Like, what does it uh, what does it take? Like approach wise, machine learning wise, how hard is this problem? How do you get to the three percent error rate? Like, what's your vision of all of this? Yeah, well, the three percent rate error rate is definitely that's that's the grand vision. Um, and we'll see what it takes to get there. Um, but we believe, you know, in in ASR, the biggest thing is the data, right? Like that's true of like a lot of machine learning problems today, right? The more data you have and the high quality of the data, the better label the data. Um, you know, that, that's how you get good results. And we at Rev have kind of like the best data. Like we have. Like you're literally, your, your we're business literally, model is annotating the data. Our, our business model is being paid to annotate <laughs> the data. Being paid to annotate the data. <laughs> uh, so it's that's kind hilarious. of like a pretty magical flywheel. Yeah. Uh, and so we've kind of like ridden this flywheel to, to, to this point. Um, and we think we're still kind of in the early stages of figuring out all the parts of the flywheel to use, you know, because we have the final transcripts um, and we have the um, the audios and we, we train on that. But we, in principle, also have all the edits that the revers make, right? Um, oh, that's I mean, interesting. How can you use that as they do? So we, we, yeah, that's, that's something for us to figure out in the future, mm -hmm. but, you know, we feel like we're only in the early stages, right? So of, the, data, but the data is there. That'd be interesting, like a, almost like a recurrent neural net for fixing for fixing transcripts. I, I, I always remember we did uh, segmentation annotation for uh, for driving data. So segmenting the scene, like visual data, mm -hmm. and you could you can get all. So it was drawing people drawing polygons around different objects and so on. And it feels like it always felt like there was a lot of information in the clicking, the sequence of clicking that people do, the kind of fixing of the polygons that they do. Now, there's a few papers written about how to draw polygons like with uh, recurrent neural nets to try to learn from the human clicking. But it was just right. like experimental, you know, it was one of those like CVPR type papers that people do like a really tiny data set. It didn't feel like people really tried to do it seriously. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if there's information in the fixing that's high, that that provides deeper set of signal than just like the raw uh, data. Mm -hmm. The course, intuition is for sure there must be, right? There must uh, be. In, in, in all kinds of signals and how long you took to, you know, make that edit and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's gonna be like up to us. That's, that's why like we're, the next, Couple of years is like super exciting for us, right? So that's what like the focus is now. Is you mentioned Rev.ai. That's where you want to. Yeah. So Rev.ai is kind of um, our way of bringing this ASR to you know the rest of the world, right? So when we started, um, we were human only, and you know then we kind of created this uh, Temi service. I think you might have used it, uh, which was kind of ASR for the consumer, right? So if you don't want to pay a dollar twenty-five, but you want to pay 
now it's 25 cents a minute, I think. And you get the, um, the transcript, the uh, machine generated transcript, and you get an editor and you can kind of fix it up yourself, right? And then we started using TSR for our own um, human transcriptionists. And then the kind of the Ravi is the final step of the journey, which is, you know, we have this amazing engine. What can people build with it, right? What kind of new applications could be enabled um, if you have speech track that's that accurate? 